Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. It's always good to be with you and always particularly good to be with my wise, intelligent, experienced colleagues, Mohammed Shukri in Bahrain and Phoebe Francis in Dubai. Good morning, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good morning, everyone. Graham and Phoebe. G greetings to all. It is a sunny and beautiful day. Oh, oh, yes, that's really good. Just for those of you who may not know, I am a certified master of the Leadership Challenge. Uh, I've been a certified master for over 10 years, and I've presented this program in many countries, uh, physically in many countries, as well as virtually. And it's a, a program that the three of us know how effective it is. It's globally recognised for its effectiveness. So let us continue as we do our conversations that we have every week about what we believe is an area of leadership that in our discussion or conversation will bring value to those of you listening to us. Am I right, gentlemen? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, let me just postulate that's my big word for today. Let me just put out this this concept. What if the leader finds themselves in a situation where the people that they are leading, perhaps not all of them, but some of them, are more experienced in the work that they're doing, maybe even in, maybe even in leadership, than the individual leader of that team or that group or that company even. But let's talk about the team or the group. I'm sure there'll be people who will relate to this, that they may have been put in a position where they were elevated at a young age to, and the people who were working with them were older. I will put my hand up and say that I was at a young age leading a lot of people. And a lot of these people had a lot more experience than I did. So, gentlemen, let us discuss this issue. Who would like to kick us off first? Mohammed, how about you? Yeah. Yes, um, thank you very much. It really happened a um, few weeks back when I received a call from a former student. Now she is um, on top of a section in her school and suddenly she has to lead uh, a number of uh, other people who are actually more senior one and more experienced than her in the work she does she said i'm fine with this and uh, this is an order from the school uh, principal so i didn't have anything to do with it and yet i have to do the work and the project leading those people but guess what I find a lot of resistance, a lot of no, 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 no. And so I'm feeling that resistance. I'm feeling that blockage in our work slow down. And she was, of course, for the first time, she was also a new leader, by the way. And this was a problem for her. And I, it got me thinking a lot. Many people, if they go through this, what will happen to work? What will happen to relationships between the leader and team? All this is going to be on the line. Absolutely. Phoebe, what is your reaction to this as a suggested topic? Yeah, especially when you are moving at a young age to uh, managing more, more people who are senior, I think this is a self-doubt which emerges in many of our, us who are um, taking the first step in, into a leadership role. And I think there is nothing to be afraid of. Now, that is what where I am coming from. What can I do in that situation? And what, 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 what way I can, uh, you know, um, be a, a leader there, where I can lead more of uh, my senior fellow colleagues who have much richer experience, who have much wider worldview. So this is an opportunity which I see we should uh, take head on. In the when I say head on means in in a very polite way with with care, 
so we will discuss that as as a next step graham that is my perspective so because there is nothing to worry about that is a good thing and that is helping you to have much richer experience from your fellow colleagues so see that as a lens when you are in that specific shoes so i i just uh, like to hear your perspectives to graham before we come to some of the areas and ways in which we can uh, explore this further yeah sure one of the elements that can often occur in this situation and maybe with the, the example that Muhammad has given us, this might, might, may apply. But we all know of imposter syndrome. And when someone is in a situation where they are immediately identify in real terms the level of experience that the people who they are leading is more uh, of more uh, significance, more years than they have, they will be likely or possibly thinking, oh, my gosh, how can I possibly be the example for these people to follow when they are so much more experienced than I am? They've been around on this planet a lot longer than I have, perhaps. In some cases, when people are put into this role, the people who are then reporting to them can be older than their parents even. And they might be thinking, how can I possibly be in this role uh, when this woman or this man is older than my father or my mother? And how can they respect me because of this age difference? They can be thinking, why, how am I doing this? Why me? I'm too young. I'm not right. I don't have the experience. So you're right, Phoebe, that people should, as a first step, believe in themselves. Believe that if they have been asked to take this role, they have been asked to take it for a reason. And one of the reasons is, I'm going to suggest, that those who've made the suggestion that that person become that manager or that leader, that they're making this suggestion based on what they have seen this person do. It's not just that they went down the list of alphabetical names and said, oh, it's time for an M, we'll put Muhammad in there. Or, or No, no, there's a reason. They've seen what this person has done. So if anybody's listening to us now, they should be aware that they've been selected to do this because there is a belief that they have the skills and abilities and the understanding to be able to do this. So That's uh, one good news. Yeah. That's one good news for uh, the leader. I can add another good news, sure. even before we talk about how to handle. So if I'm the leader who was appointed, this is really good what you said that there is a reason uh, I was chosen to do this and I should not be uh, doubtful of myself. The other thing is, as a leader, I always wanted to lead a team of intelligent people, a team of uh, experienced people, a team who can solve the solution uh, problems fast, a team who can really help me, not a team I need to help them uh, so uh, incompetent, so inexperienced, and then I will have much more trouble in bringing them up, training them to the level to help me. So you should be thankful. You have a team who is ready to do wonders in no time because of their experience. That's an advantage, although the communication might be rough at the beginning, but that's another advantage that you have a really capable team. Absolutely. Phoebe, you were going to say something. Yeah, so, so one thing <laughs> on building on, uh, on what Mohammed mentioned, you know, uh, it, it is that process of building trust. How can I build trust with my team? How I know each other better? And he, here I like to bring that phrase, which is sometimes I use in my uh, learning programs, is connection before content, you know connection before content. How how can I know my team, who they are? You know, one, one of the responsibility uh, when, when, when we move into leadership role is understanding uh, who my team members are, one-on-one, -on -one, and, and, and exploring with them their, their interests, their areas, their uh, uh, perspectives. And I think that, that actually takes away the barriers which we may have when we, when we start our action planning with them. So 
build that trust and and graham you also pointed out what what way i can be a role model for them and that brings to the concept of modeling the behavior which which in the leadership challenge it is very clear so as a new leader yes i have senior members take some time to connect with them so that will be building the trust with each of these uh, team members i am having we all know that one of the fundamentals of the leadership challenge is leadership is a relationship and this is critical the importance of building the relationship with the individuals is so critical and when you do this particularly with uh, someone who is more experienced let's just 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 think about the conversation that the June or the younger person who has been moved into the more senior role and what my, what sort of conversation might they have with the more experienced person who they might be kind of intimidated by in in some ways because of their years of experience but there's a conversation that can be had what sort of things might happen in that conversation who would like to go first yeah when uh, when i uh... Heard Phoebe say about connect before uh, content that was really powerful to me. I remember the the book actually. I have the book called Nonviolent Communication, and it's one of the best books I read on communication. It goes deeper than usual the outer uh, uh, peripheral of 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 uh, communication. One of the rules is. Uh, you might, in your communication, come across what the other person says or responds. So your immediate attention will be to the thing that they are projecting at the moment. Like, for example, if they show you uh, ignorance or, or with the body language that I don't care what you say, or they show you, for example, resistance, no, no, no. Whatever they say, you should just observe and think of where do they come from every person who communicates actually it comes from a place if you as a leader should, uh, should identify where is the place they come from so if they are actually showing you a lot of resistance think of what where they come from their need in fact he mentions it so you, when you respond, you address to the need, not to the uh, answer that they give. If they felt ignored by the uh, organization for a long time, and that's why they are reacting to you in that way, don't react to the reaction. Don't respond to the reaction. Respond to what they need and what they should have. And if you take each member of your team and address their needs slowly, slowly, especially at the beginning, you are building that relationship where people will say, they, they, she understands us, all right? She understands us, and this is where relationship comes. So let's not uh, be worried about what they say, but where they come from and try to uh, address that. Here's, here's an I just, Yes, so Phoebe. Yeah, Graham, I just thought of uh, add, uh, just, just uh, sharing this part, like, as Mohammed mentioned, value their experience, you know, value their experience. And when we say value their experience, uh, you, 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 these experienced team members are leaders and role model too. Now, in, in the context of the work, they may not be directly managing anybody, but the people around them are really valuing their expertise and experience. So I think if if you start recognizing that, recognizing their experience, celebrate with them the ideas, the wins which they are bringing in, and showing appreciation, listening to them, and that will shift the way of interaction between you and these experienced members. That is something which on top of what... Uh, uh, Mohammed mentioned, I thought I will add. So let me drill down a little bit further into, into this. And let's just hypothesize. I'm using another big word today. Oh, my gosh. Let's just consider this, that um, I am the more experienced, the lesser experienced person. 
and I have someone who's quite experienced and I'm beginning this, I've begun the relationship, we're getting to know them, we're talking about things that are not just about the office and the work environment. I know that they've got three children and I know that uh, you know, a couple of the things I share with them, the fact that I have seven, no, whatever, a few little things like this. Then I might say, uh, I'm going to ask you this question because I value what you are doing. What did I just say? I value what value. you are doing. You know where we want to go in this team and this department. So let me just reflect back for a moment and get your input on my predecessor. I want you to tell me the good things that you observed when Ali was leading this team. Oh, really? Well, Ali did this and Ali did this. And okay, those are important things for you, were they? Yeah, they were. They were. Okay. Here's my undertaking to you. I will deliver on all of those. I will deliver on all of those. Now I'm on another question. What would else would you like me as the leader or manager to be doing for you? It would make life better for you based on your experience because you've, you've been around a while. Tell me what you would like me to do. Oh, well, well, uh, we could, I'd, I'd like to have conversations with you more than I had with the predecessor. That's good. That's up for me. Always, always happy to do that. What else would you like from me? Uh, well, I'd like a bit of feedback on things that I've done. Happy to do that all the time. And if I see some good things, you know, every time I say them, I'll, give you, I'll tell you that that's good. Then I might say to this person, what are the really good things that you do? Well, I've been doing this job for 17 years. That gives you a lot of experience, doesn't it? Yeah. What do you think you need to improve on? Oh, uh, well, mm -mm, yeah, well, there's probably this and maybe that. Okay. Would you like me to help you improve on those? Give you opportunities to be even better in what you're doing? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Here's the deal. We're going to work on this together. Is that okay? Because we both understand the importance of all of us working together to get the result for this team, the division, and the overall organisation, because that's what we're here for. Does that make sense to you, my, my new friend? Yeah, 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 that sounds good. Okay. And here's another question. If I've got some, some questions about what's going on procedurally in this team that I don't understand, can I come in and check your advice on this? Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to help. Okay. Thank you very much. See, I want to win. I want to have this person know that I am, am aware of what might have gone on before that was positive. I'm not, by the way, going to say, what were the things that you didn't like that the predecessor did? This is not about that. What are the good things that they did? Okay, good. I'll make sure I did them. Or if they don't come up with any good things, say, well, what would you like your the leader of your team to do? Uh, well, and if they don't have any answers, say, well, here's what I will do. I'll do this. I'll, I'll give you feedback. I'll, we'll have discussions about your performance. Uh, I'll recognise the good things that you do. I will help you grow in this role. How does that sound to you? I guarantee with those little questions, the response is going to be, oh, I feel pretty good. <laughs> okay, that's good. Is it okay that I draw on your wisdom and your experience? and he'll lift you up even more so that we all get great results for the team. How does that sound? Gentlemen, how does that conversation go with you? Yeah, I was into it, really. I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but what I'm doing is, yes, the first part is the, the relationship, but I'm honouring the, the experience and the intelligence of that other person. And validate yeah, it. And that, and that brings us to the previous also episode where we talked about uh, leaders ask questions. So you as a leader who are um, less senior or less experienced for your team, you ask questions. You act as, in fact, you are someone who is in need of answers and they should give the answers. So why don't you switch roles and make them feel 
quote unquote leaders by giving the answers, although leaders ask questions, but for now, ask them and they will answer. And when they answer, they feel they are leading the uh, leading the way. In in a way, they are leading the way. But I also uh, I want to pick on Phoebe's uh, what he said. Um, uh, leadership challenge. The leadership challenge itself is a model to uh, to answer all leadership situations. And he started with model the way. Let me go to uh, share. Uh, sorry, inspire a shared vision. And why don't I kick off my leadership term with this new team, which is older than me or more experienced than me, by having their views on what do they look for themselves? What is their vision for themselves? What is it that something probably, possibly all these years were they kept quiet and unspoken about? Maybe it is me who will allow them, who will allow them and give them the hope to speak their uh, uh, visions and speak their aspirations and ambitions in this new team. They will feel good, one, and also you promise uh, uh, trustworthiness that you will actually, I am there to achieve your visions. How does that look as a kickoff for a seemingly difficult era? So inspire a shared vision, number two, that is also something you can choose and use. But this is really good. And I want to move forward now into, because it excites me when we link to this and the reality of what we talk about. I want to move this now to the next practice of leadership challenge. So uh -huh. if that leader, and I'll give you a specific example, but if that leader says to the more experienced people who he might he might feel that they are feeling, those people are feeling a little bit um, put out, as we say in English, uh, that they are feeling missed, they were not being valued after all their years of experience and they didn't get the job, they weren't promoted and they brought in this junior person. So I would be saying if I was in this situation, what can we change to make it better? Mm. You mm. have been working here for so long. What could we do differently? Well, let me just tell you, I've been trying to get this changed since 19-whatever. Oh, okay. Let's <laughs> try and make that work. Now, let me share with you a story. I, am, I don't think I've shared this with you before, but it's a story I heard over 10 years ago when I began this leadership challenge journey. And this story was about a, a woman who was appointed by General Motors to run a particular factory uh, that had 3,000 staff producing car parts. And the theory was, and there's a video made about this, but the suggestion was that she was appointed to this position so that she would fail and that the company would then be forced to close the plant, which is kind of what they wanted to do. Now, she's a woman and she's younger and has far less experience than the men who are running the plant. So what did she do in three days, the first three days that she was there? She shook, maybe it was three and a half days, but she shook 3,000 hands. She shook the hand of every person who was employed. She not only shook the hand, but she said, what do we need to do to make changes around here? What can we do to make it better? Where are the, where are the problems? And what did she do? But she transformed that operation. Now, when that story was initially told to me, that my colleague who was telling me the story said he shared this story and the video with five executives who had, had been directed to him because they were in the same situation as this woman was. They needed help. And, this, and they were at the same level as this woman in many ways. And at the end of showing them that story, that or talking about that example, one of the more senior men in this small group said, I don't have time to shake 3,000 hands. <laughs> Guess what happened? They failed and they were out of a job. What they should have done was to shake the 3,000 hands or however many hands there and ask the people, what do we need to change? How can we make improvements? They are the so people who don't know. That's challenge the process. So the, the third one is challenge the process. Absolutely. 
to say to those people who are in that position, when you are a junior leader, let's put that title on it, feeling that you shouldn't be in that more senior role because the others have got experience, say to them, what do we need to change? How can we make improvements? They will I think, uh, likely Graham, know uh, they've probably got a sore head from banging it against the wall to make changes, <laughs> they, you know, given up. Phoebe? Yeah, I, I think, you, you know, it, it, it actually is uh, spilling over to the next part. You know, you are oh. enabling oh. us to act in that process too. <laughs> of course. Of course. Yeah, because you are asking what, 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 what can we change and they feel they are participated in the process and, and they feel... Okay, I we can do that. We can do that together, and that that makes the transition and work smoother. You you are enabling change in that yeah. uh, in that process, leading to other people acting and and the again that is actually valuing. You know, I am valued in that place, and I am needed, and uh, that actually flourishes the organization. And, and, and that leadership capability. In simple terms, when someone comes up with a new with an idea that's been blocked for years, and the leader that we're talking about says to them, "Hang on, you think this can be done? Yes. What's the cost? No, not really. Okay. What's the value? Sounds good. Do it. How soon can you have it done? Uh, uh, come and tell me about it when it's in place." But if you need any help from me, if you need me to knock down any walls, come and talk to me about it. That's what should be done, Phoebe. Thank you for linking those two, linking challenge the process to enable others to act. Where because it's a fourth, yeah, sure. yeah, the fourth behavior, the fourth practice says enable others to act. So in number three, we ask them, what, what can we do for a change? They said that, okay, you do it. That's you do number it. Four. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the the line that we could put onto that, the the person says, "Do it." The line could be, "Well, what's holding you back? It's certainly not me." In other words, mm -hmm. you, you go ahead and you make it work. Now, what's the likelihood of whatever it is being successful? Boy, that's a that's a big statement, isn't it? But what do you? What's the likelihood? of it being successful, whatever the change is. I'm going to suggest yeah. pretty high because I, we are in, enabling that person. We are in, we're saying, mm -hmm. you do it. You do it. That person is going to feel with the, with the trust that I have in them, the confidence that I have in them to do it, they're going to make it work. They want to make yeah. it because of the reflection on, on them. And we know... The statistics show that 96% of people perform at their best when they are challenged. So there's a pretty high reason, pretty high end result possibility. Gentlemen, what else? Yeah, so, so I, number five. Well, I mean, oh, yeah, how could we? It's time to celebrate. How, Muhammad, you, this is so good of you to remember. You always, I like to say, you always remember. <laughs> What is the fifth practice? It's uh, encourage the heart. Encourage the heart, sure, sure. So when we reach at this stage, if when people act, you know, uh, it is said that motivation comes not before what you do something, but after what you do something, after you're done with it. You know, uh, biggest motivation is intrinsic. And when you enable others to act, and then they come back to you and they say, done. All right. And you, of course, during the process, you acknowledge the progress which leaders must do, not just wait in their room until a team has finished. You should follow up, acknowledge the progress. And then when they are done, uh, you celebrate with them and uh, they feel already highly motivated. So you actually, by following the five practices, you have reached to the end point, which is the beginning of a, a beautiful and powerful collaboration, you will actually have already encouraged their heart. I have one point to add to number four. Even if this, there is no actually option 
to do it, but this way, for example, if we have a delicate process in an industry or a procedure in an institution, then there is no uh, space for uh, doing it in another way. Uh, uh, in another way, so we have to do it this way. Uh, you can ask the leader who is more experienced than you. We have to do this procedure regardless because it's mandated. But I like to you to do it uh, the way you find it uh, most effective the way you find it most productive, the way you find it most cost effective, as you said. So in that case, you have made the people under you or working with you own not only the uh, action, but even the methodology. And of course, they will own the winning when they, uh, at the, come at the end and celebrate with number five. Well, one quick point about what you just said. Usually in this situation, what is most important is the outcome. Right? No, you yes. must do this. The important thing is the outcome. And someone at some stage has identified 27 steps or procedures or processes or tick boxes, whatever, that have to be followed. But the important thing is the end result. So you could say to this person, if there's 27 things that have got to be filled in, please look at all of them and make sure we'll find another way around some of those. But the end result remains the most important thing. Yeah. Yep. Because we get we get held back so often because of these twenty seven points that have all got to be followed. Not always, Phoebe. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, one aspect which I just want to bring attention to all leaders out there is you know any processes which we define can be changed, and that is where you as a uh, enabler, as leadership, as position, as an enabler. But when we say, what can I do? May the employee say, can we change this process, which is making it uh, slower? So we can change that. Get yeah. the res uh, respective people in the room, get it approved, done. So that is where, again, encouragement of heart happens because the people see what you are doing to bring better processes, better uh, innovative practices. And yeah. that also encourages the heart. Yes. Quick example, I was working with a banking sector, as we know, with some, some mid-level team members, and one of them said there is a particular process that must be followed. It takes two days for this process to be followed. She reduced the process. She, she looked at, in the same way that I say, look at all the points that have to be covered off and see if they're all relevant. But she looked at it and she, but the end result was important. She was able to achieve this in two hours, not two days. Think of the saving to the to the organisation, right? So the leader should be encouraging, even and particularly if he, some, he, is, he or she is at a, let's say, more less experienced level than the other team members. You guys know it all. I need you with your wisdom and your experience to help us find new and better ways to do things and to achieve the vision as Muhammad said earlier, for what we are all about to achieve. Gentlemen, as always, this do you have a final comment, Muhammad? No, uh, as always, I wanted to say that the five uh, leadership practices, uh, which were built on um, uh, based on evidence of 40 years, they really come handy in every almost every situation I come across. Yeah. Maybe some one or some of the practices are more uh, relevant to this uh, challenge that you face. But every leadership challenge, those five practices are really helpful to you. Relevant and relevant, yeah. to cu whichever culture, whichever country, whichever organization, whether it's government, military, educational, nonprofit, whatever, it still always applies. Those five practices. Phoebe, one final word. Yeah, yeah, friends. We are. If you are watching, we are discussing about the leadership challenge. We've got to get. We've got to get you to hold up the the seventh edition. The sixth edition is fantastic, but the seventh edition is even better. <laughs> yeah. So those who are listening, we are discussing about the leadership challenge by James Kasuz and Barry Postner, Thanks published you. by Wiley. Yeah, absolutely. Well known. Been around for all these years. Gentlemen, once again, it's been a pleasure. 
I enjoy sharing, uh, having you share your wisdom and your ideas. And I hope that we are helping to change the world, even one leader at a time. Gentlemen, I wish you and everybody who's listening to us a very good week ahead. Anybody listening has got any queries, questions, then please email me. I will take accountability for this. Graham, G-R-A-H-A-M, at Leadership Challenge Middle East dot com and i look forward as we both all of you and i both all of us would love to hear from you out there gentlemen see you next week have a great week bye see you next week thank you see you all subscribe like comment <laughs>